Hi students, today I am here with a poem named The Woman and the Flame by uh, M.A. Cesare. Um, she, he is a poet, a playwright from Martinique. So this poem is prescribed in your second semester art and literary aesthetics paper. So now let's look at the poet and then move on to his poem prescribed the woman and the flame so M.A. Césaire he was born in 1913 and died in 2008 so as I told he uh, was a poet playwright and politician from Martinique and Martinique is an island in the uh, Caribbean okay and Césaire was part of the negritude movement and it is a movement which celebrated African heritage and culture. Now, he secured educational scholarship and he was educated in Paris in France and uh, uh, the most famous poem uh, written by him was called Notebook of a Return to the Native Land and it is a long poem it's a book length poem and uh, he mostly wrote about the struggles of black people under colonialism and racism. Okay, So that was the main uh, content of his uh, writings about the struggles of the black people. And uh, he was a member of the French Communist Party in Martinique. Uh, but in 1956, he resigned from that party. And in 1958, he founded the Martinican Progressive Party. Okay, and uh, you can uh, also see that he uh, uh, he was uh, in, in in memory of uh, or in respect uh, to uh, M. A. Césaire, uh, the Martinican International uh, Airport was renamed as Martinique M. A. Césaire International Airport uh, in two thousand seven. Uh, so this is an airport of Martinique in the French West Indies. And then moving on to some of the important works by Césaire. One is an essay, a discourse on colonialism. Then he has uh, written a play called The Tragedy of King uh, Christophe. And then uh, another book-length poem, Journal of a Homecoming. And uh, then one of his most explosive poetry collection is Solar Thrust Slashed, the unexpurgated 1948 edition. Uh, so it is in this text in this collection that we find the poem prescribed for you uh, the woman and the flame okay so that's about uh, the poet you need to have a, uh, a, a bit of understanding about uh, the poet that's why it's discussed and next let's move on to uh, the poem let's move on to the poem the woman and the flame by M.A. Césaire a bit of light that transcends the spring head of a gaze, twin shadow of the eyelash and the rainbow on a face, and round about who goes there angelically ambling, woman the current weather. The current weather matters little to me. My life is always ahead of a hurricane. You are the morning that sweeps down on the lamb a night stone between its teeth. You are the passage of seabirds as well. You, who are the wind through the salty epomis of consciousness, insinuating yourself from another world. Woman, you are a dragon whose lovely color is dispersed and darkens so as to constitute the inevitable tenor of things. I'm used to brush fires, I'm used to ashen bush rats and the bronze ibis of the flame. Woman, binder of the foresail, gorgeous ghost, helmet of algae of eucalyptus. Dawn, isn't it? And in the abandon of the ribbons, very savoury swimmer. Now let's look at the poem more closely. So in the very first few lines, she's describing the face of a woman. A bit of light that descends the spring head of a gaze. So this line describes that an amount of light, a bit of light, 
maybe a small amount of light coming from someone's eyes okay that means when somebody looks that person's eyes looks like a spring head spring head means some origin a fountain something like that okay so that person's eyes is like an origin of some light then he says twin shadow of the eyelash and the rainbow on her face and both her eyes the woman's eyes looks like twin shadows that means it's so dark like a shadow the two eyes or its eyelashes are so dark like a shadow but look at the face the face is vibrant like a rainbow rainbow you know it's so full of vibrance colors etc so that vibrance is what you see on that person's face so those those eyes looks like two lights or it looks like a fountain of light the eyelashes are dark as shadows and the face resembles uh, the cheerfulness the vibrance of a rainbow and then and round about who goes there angelically ambling and then he moves on to describe how that woman is walking okay and how is the movement the movement is described she is not walking straight but she is uh, walking in a wavy manner and she her walk her gait resembles an angel an angel floating okay those are the first few lines wherein she describes uh, the face and the graceful movement of a woman we don't know who that woman is some woman next woman the current weather the current weather matters little to me my life is always ahead of a hurricane the poet is telling the woman the current weather of that land whatever it may be it can be very bad adverse but it matters little to me i'm not bothered about whether the weather is good or bad my life is always ahead of a hurricane that means i have prepared myself to face any challenge whatever it may be so as you can see there are no punctuations uh, in this poem or if at all it is there they are placed or they are misplaced they are not placed in the correct position so that is a deliberate attempt by the poet he has broken all sorts of conventions regarding punctuations and apostrophe and uh, all such things so uh, because of that multiple interpretations have come up uh, regarding the reading of this poem so uh, one possible inter- interpretation that came up was that the poet is talking about the tumultuous uh, political uh, scenario of uh, martinique uh, which was under the french colonial government so that woman here might represent that island who is witnessing uh, all these challenges or all the fights and conflicts uh, that are happening over there that is one interpretation and in another interpretation it is said that it can be the woman stating so there needs to be a, a colon after woman the woman woman colon the woman is saying the woman which the poet described in the first few lines she is saying the current weather matters little to me okay she is the one who is saying this the whatever it is uh, happening around me or whatever is happening with my life my surroundings it matters little to me she has moved on to a point in life where uh, she is indifferent to all the chaos that is happening around her she is prepared for bigger challenges that's why she's saying my life is always ahead of a hurricane so these are two possible uh, interpretations or readings that are uh, uh, that have come across then it says you are the morning that sweep swoops down on the lamb a night stone between its teeth you are the passage of sea birds as well you who are the wind through the salty epomas of consciousness insinuating yourself from another world the poet uh, continues with the description of that woman and uh, look at that line you are the morning that swoops down on the lamb a night stone between its teeth so here in that in that single line you can find uh, two sets of images it's, it's so packed okay so what is that 
you are the morning that swoops down on the lamb that means you are like that sunlight which uh, falls on the mountain peaks or on the waters rivers uh, shore etc in the morning okay during sunrise that beautiful golden rays of the sun that falls on the terrains on the landscape on waters etc so that is that is one description that is attributed to a woman okay you are that morning sunlight that swoops down on the lamb what is the second image he says you are a night stone between its teeth that means uh, at night when there is total darkness uh, you take two stones and rub it okay and there uh, there will be a spark that will ignite a spark which leads to uh, which can give us fire right so the second imagery is that of two stones being rubbed at night and between its teeth between its teeth means between the, uh, while that process of rubbing uh, happens spark emits and uh, you get fire so woman is also like that so despite very tight uh, very oppressive circumstances very cutting edge uh, situations uh, the woman is able to uh, give fire or she is a fire brand okay so that is one, another uh the second image that's there then uh, she uh, then he says you are the passage of sea birds as well you who are the wind through the salty ipomas of consciousness insinuating yourself from another world and the next lines uh, the poet compares uh, the woman to sea birds as well as wind okay so you are the passage of sea birds as well as as well Uh, you who are the wind through the salty ipomas of consciousness and ipomas are flowers also known as morning glory and uh, it it symbolizes uh, freedom independence etc so here the poet is saying that uh, this woman is like a wind or the birds flying over the sea and she symbolizes freedom and movement she might have gone through many mishaps during her life she has gone she might have gone through many torturous experiences many bad experiences during her life but she is inspiring herself she is encouraging herself uh, to move forward to leave that past and move forward to another world okay so that shows that strength and courage of a woman uh, to move forward despite all those hardships and it can also be taken like as i said said earlier the woman here symbolizes the island uh, which has gone through which has experienced which has witnessed in fact uh, so many uh, conflicts and riots and rebellions bloodshed violence uh, under that french colonial rule so uh, that land is uh, keeping aside all those memories and uh, experiences and it is striving forward it is moving forward to make new history so that power that resilience of the land as well as the woman is what uh, the poet is talking about then the next lines woman you are a dragon whose lovely color is dispersed and darkens so as to constitute the inevitable tenor of things so next he compares uh, the woman to a dragon and what is the significance of a dragon here dragon uh, it it has different symbolism in uh, eastern as well as western traditions in according to western tradition that is christian traditions uh, dragon is a symbol of evil okay uh, while in the uh, eastern tradition in the oriental uh, tradition it symbolizes supernatural power wisdom strength uh, knowledge etc for example in china chinese culture dragon represents good luck strength health etc so uh, but according to the western culture it is a symbol of evil so uh, maybe here we can take it like that the woman symbolizes both right uh, not only a woman but you take any human being we have a beast within us as well as an angel within us so you have different shades different hues of all these elements the beastly element as well as the angelic element within us okay 
So that is what uh, the poet is talking about. Woman, you are a dragon whose lovely color is dispersed and darkens so as to constitute the inevitable tenor of things. So you constitute both color as well as darkness. Uh, you constitute the, the light element as well as the dark element, the evil element as well as the virtue element. So uh, that is inevitable. You constitute all these things. You are an embodiment of that whole spirit which contains uh, different hues or different emotions, different passions, uh, etc. Okay? And then he says, I'm used to bush brush fires. I'm used to, to ashen bush rats and the bronze abyss of the flame. Then the poet is saying we are uh, familiar with all such adverse circumstances in life. Maybe a fire, a brush fire or the, the bush rats uh, destroying the crops uh, or fire and flames uh, that happen because of conflicts between people, political conflicts, social conflicts, etc. So we are all used to uh, all such uh, things, especially the poet says, I'm, I'm used to all these uh, things, all these events. I have witnessed all such events. Woman binder of the for sale gorgeous ghost, helmet of algae of eucalyptus, Dawn, isn't it? And in the abandon of the ribbons, very savory swimmer. So many things happen in a land, right? Many things happen. So not only that, you take up the life of a woman. Uh, when she is uh, in a family, uh, she has to uh, have many roles. She has to perform everything perfectly well. Uh, she has to look after her parents, her children, her husband, um, everything. Different roles a woman has to play. And other than that, she also has to come across many difficulties, uh, so many pressures, uh, so many tortures. So despite all this struggle, uh, she she keeps everything together the family especially she holds everything together even though there are problems conflicts etc uh, when you take up a family for example it is the woman who binds that family uh, together that binding force uh, so just like that uh, you can also uh, refer this to as that land the island uh, the, the caribbean the martinic island that the poet is talking about so so many things are happening there will be uh, conflicts between people conflict between tribes there will be between political parties uh, so many things there will be uh, some uh, and environmental issues going on uh, colonial issues going on so many problems are going on but still uh, it is that land the island which binds together all its people and uh, keeps it together so that's why he says, woman, she's the binder of the four sail. She's that main sail. She's that most important sail in that life's journey. And uh, uh, she appears to be uh, like a beautiful ghost. She's, he's calling her a gorgeous ghost uh, who, who wears a helmet, who wears a crown uh, made of algae of eucalyptus. And the eucalyptus is significant here because it is a holy tree for the tribals, for the aboriginals. For them, it represents the, the division of underworld, uh, earth and heaven. Uh, and the eucalyptus leaf also has that purifying effect as negative energy disappears uh, whenever you place a, a, a eucalyptus leaf. That is their uh, belief. Okay. So uh, she is, this woman is like, uh, oh, that woman is wearing that, uh, that crown of uh, eucalyptus uh, leaf. And that is, that is very symbolic because she is that purifying uh, element. She is that... Uh, that uh, force that is get that is a riding uh, of all those negative energies and then dawn isn't it and in the abandon of the ribbons very savory swimmer so when it is dawn dawn means an, a fresh start so after all that conflict is over uh, when everything comes to a peaceful uh, a new beginning uh, so she abandons that riband riband uh, means uh, uh, it's a it's a narrow strip uh, used in in many cases it can be like a ribbon uh, or it can be like a strip uh, of cloth uh, hard cloth uh, used to tie a uh, used in shipbuilding it can be used for many purposes so in the morning uh, she leaves that strip that riband that holds the ship okay and then uh, she swims uh, savoring savory means very uh, happily she swims she swims through everything that life has to offer. So when after pacifying everything, after bringing everything to a peaceful end, uh, then she 
uh, goes to enjoy for some time or then she restarts maybe she uh, her life is like that that's what he says uh, you take up a land uh, for example if you take india for example once upon a time we had a different set of problems we had the british people attacking us looting us uh, taking our resources and all those things everything uh, but then we attained independence but after that can we say that everything is over by that no uh, in each uh, period historical period we come across different set of problems different set of uh, situations that demand some sort of action right uh, so uh, in the case of a woman also when she uh, when she pacifies or when she solves one problem uh, that's done but uh, after that new challenges will arise so she has to she just have to consider it as a part of her life and swim through that life effortlessly uh, so and that's what she does so this is the poem it's, it's actually a very difficult poem uh, it's a complicated poem and this is one of his very explosive uh, poems included in his collection Sol- solar throat slashed so we we can say that this is a very symbolic poem that explores themes of liberation identity and resistance against oppression and the poem uh, can be interpreted in various ways but it's often seen as a metaphorical exploration of the struggle of freedom and self determination okay especially in the context of colonialism Uh, and uh, the central image is that of a woman and the flame as the title states and it is rich with symbolism the woman represents maybe the land as i told earlier the island or it may represent women the female gender or it may represent the colonized to people the oppressed people and what does the flame stand for the flame symbolizes their desire for freedom and independence okay so overall we can say that it is a powerful and thought provoking poem that speaks to uh, the universal human desire for freedom and self determination while at the same time it also addresses the specific uh, historical and political context of uh, colonialism and oppression thank you